Hello everyone, and welcome to the fanfic heaven, so we are back with an interesting movie on what if Naruto had Sailor Moon power become legend of the Moon Shinobi. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content, let's start the story. Somewhere in the North Pole in the large icy field of the cold region two men were present one had silver hair with glasses and he was wearing a grey ninja uniform on his forehead he the headband with a music not the symbol of the sound village. The second man was wearing a sound ninja uniform he had long black hair yellow snake eyes and pale skin. Are you sure this is the place? asked the ninja with glasses. Yes this is the place Kabuto I can sense the evil energy circulating in this place, the pale man said. Orochimaru-sama I hope she agree with this, she will agree to help us because revenge will be on her side, Orochimaru said while chuckling. It's time to get started, he began to form hand seals. Ninja art returned from the underworld, suddenly the snowy ground started trembling and a black coffin appeared Kabuto chuckle while adjusting his glasses and Orochimaru gave an evil grin. Success, Orochimaru said as he walked to the coffin and opened it. Kabuto went next to him and inside the coffin was a middle-aged woman with long dark red hair wearing a purple gown, the woman slowly began to open her brown eyes she gazed at the two men who were giving her a wicked grin there was a short silence before Orochimaru spoke. Greetings you must be Queen Beryl of the Dark Kingdom. And if I am? Beryl hiss. Orochimaru chuckle, now now there's no need to get hostile on me I'm a friend. Beryl didn't knew him and she already didn't trusted him a bit she could feel the evil energy surrounding him but she decided to play along for now. My name is Orochimaru and this is Kabuto, he said while pointing to the ninja with glasses. I am the one who brought you back from the dead. Beryl's eyes widened, yes I remember I was defeated by that moon wench she will pay so you revive me I'm sure you want something in return. Orochimaru grin, I want you to have your revenge on the one responsible for your death. How nice of you, Beryl said sarcastic, I'm going to kill her but I don't have enough power and Master Metalia is gone if I have the silver crystal I could use its power to bring back my army and master. Well that's what I'm here for I will help you get the crystal however, Orochimaru said but he was cut off by Beryl. In exchange you will keep the crystal is that it? Orochimaru chuckled. That's how it is a favor for a favor I revive you I help you get the silver crystal so you can revive your army and your master and after that you give the crystal it's a fine deal if you ask me. Beryl glare at him while Kabuto spoke. You have no choice if you want your revenge that badly, he said with a smirk. Beryl growl. Fine I accept your help, Orochimaru gave a wicked smile. Good then let's get going to begin our plan. Kabuto nodded and vanished with Orochimaru in a cloud of smoke followed by Beryl who vanished in a black shade. Inside the Hakawa Jinja temple in the chamber of fire a ravenhair priestess was sitting meditating when suddenly she saw something horrible in a second she opened her eyes and she started panting and sweating, she finally spoke in a scare tone. What was that all about whatever it was it wasn't good I had a terrible feeling about this I better call the others fast. He found himself in a large white room. He figured that he must be in a large mansion or a castle then he saw a large bed obviously he was in someone's bedroom. After looking around the room he takes a look at himself and realized he's not wearing his average cloths he was wearing a white uniform with silver lining a long white cape and a silver chest plate. Where am I? The blonde teen said. Then out of nowhere a figure appears before him it was a woman she seems to be in her early 30s she was wearing a beautiful white gown at the bottom of the dress was color lavender. Her hair was a little weird it was two pigtails with two buns on her head color light lavender. He couldn't clearly see her face but he felt a strange feeling about this woman it was kind of familiar and warm. The woman finally spoke. You must remember who you are. What are you talking about? Please you must remember who you are. The woman pleaded. The woman started to fade away. Wait who are you? The blonde teen said. Just before her image faded he was able to see something on the woman's face it appears to be the symbol of a golden crescent moon on her forehead. Wait come back, the blonde teen pleaded again but then everything went black. End of dream sequence, he woke up from his bed with a start and confused look on his face. He sighed, that dream again it's the third time this week what is she talking about I know who I am I'm Uzumaki Naruto future Hokage of Konoha. He got up from his bed and changed his light blue pajamas and brown nightcap and put his orange and black uniform, he went to the kitchen and eat some on his instant noodle cups. 
After eating breakfast he left his apartment and put his black leaf headband in gaze at the view of the village. Yeah today I'm going to train harder. This was Naruto's home the hidden leaf village of Konoha located in the fire country where many people trained to become leaf ninjas and even become future Hokage which was the title of the strongest ninja and leader of the village. Naruto's long life dream is to become Hokage so the people of the village would stop disrespecting him because he has the spirit of the nine tails demon fox Kiyubi sealed inside of him. If he becomes Hokage the people will see what a great ninja he is and probably they will respect him and be proud of him. Ever since he became a genin he has been training hard to earn the respect he deserves what he didn't know that the people of the village has been slowly earning their respect towards him. He defeated Gara of the desert the holder of the demon raccoon Shukaku at the sand and sound invasion three years ago, he helped the legendary Sanin Jiraiya bring back Tsunade and other Sanin to return to the village and become fifth Hokage. He also became a member of the Sasuke retrieval group to bring the Uchiha back to the village since he voluntarily left and joined Orochimaru in his quest to gain power so he could kill his brother and fulfill his revenge. Even if he failed in bringing back the Uchiha he wasn't going to give up he gave his other teammate and formal crush Haruno Sakura that he was going to bring him back it was a promise of the lifetime. During his training he had lots of missions but only a few of them were or included tracking Sasuke but he had no luck in locating the whereabouts of the missing Uchiha. An this or the filler's arc. Jiraiya finally came to him and told him he was going to take him to train for three years and he couldn't be any happier he will get stronger and return on his mission to find his lost best friend. He wasn't the only one who was going to train and become strong but Sakura told him that she was going to become strong and together they were going to bring back Sasuke. So she went to Tsunade and she became her apprentice in becoming a strong and skilled medic ninja. And so three years have passed and he was back in the village he met his teammate Sakura and admitted that she was prettier than last time but it surprised him to find out that he didn't have any more romantic feelings for the pink hair Kunoichi he finally let it go and decided to have her as his friend. The same day he returned to the village he and Sakura were given the same survival test that they took when they became genins with their sensei the copy ninja Hitaki Kakashi. It was necessary to test their skills and teamwork since they haven't done nothing but train in three years, and they proved to be an unstoppable team and proved they were strong since they both took the bells from the copy ninja. He was shocked to find out that Sakura was a chunin and not just her but the ninjas from the rookie 9 have become chunins with exception of Neji and Shikamaru they have become junins. So here he was heading to the training grounds and he was feeling bored it's been a four weeks since he returned to the village and he hasn't gotten a mission yet. So the only thing he did was to train while hopefully waiting for a mission, he finally reached one of the training grounds and face off to the targets set on the trees. He form a hand seal. Shadow clone jutsu. Ten Naruto clones appear they all took a couple of shurikens from their proper ostler and threw them at the targets all of them shurikens hit its mark he gave a confident smile while his clones vanish. Yeah my accuracy have really improved a lot. Ha you call that training I call it slacking off, a voice from out of nowhere said. Naruto grin recognizing the owner of the voice suddenly the one and only Uchiha Sasuke appear wearing a blue shirt with the symbol of the Uchiha on the back he had long black pants black ninja sandals and a blue leaf headband strap on his forehead. On the back of his waist he strapped Kusanagi a sword that Orohimaru gave him while he was training with him. It's true three years after he left the village he return of course he didn't receive a happy welcome he was arrested by the Ambu and spent a couple of weeks in a jail cell. The Leaf Council were demanding his execution for leaving the village and joining with a traitor like Orochimaru who was responsible for the death of the late third Hokage. Now when Naruto returned from his training trip and find out that the Uchiha was back he immediately went to him and gave him a nice punch on his face for leaving the village in the first place not to mention that his friend Sakura was sobbing for his return and she was also quite pissed at him she almost tried to kill him once. That's when he finds out how much Sakura has changed in the past three years and he was glad she has while he was trying to hide and deny the feelings of affection he was feeling for the pink hair Kunoichi. Tsunade wanted to join in the vote for Sasuke's execution but she thought twice when Naruto stepped in and told her that the Uchiha will be his responsibility if he leaves the village again he promised her with lament and regret in his voice that he will kill him. So she accepted the blonde ninja's promise knowing that he never backs down on his word because it was his way of the ninja. Naruto grin at the Uchiha, Hey Sasuke did you came to interfere my training? Sasuke smirk. Nah I came to train but enough with the talking let's go Naruto I want to have a spar with you. Naruto gave a confident smile, 
you want to see how strong I have become? Hey you haven't seen how strong I have become Dobi. All right bring it then. Sasuke grabbed Kusanagi while Naruto took a kanai from his ostler. The two ninjas charge at each other when suddenly they heard someone clearing his throat. They look next to them and turn pale seeing the masked ninja Kakashi with frown on his face even if he was wearing his mask it was clear to see. Um, Kakashi sensei hi it's not what it looks like we weren't going to fight isn't that right Sasuke? Naruto said nervously. No we were just playing games nothing serious, Sasuke said coolly. Really, the masked ninja reply with a serious look, because if it was true that you two were about to duke it out with one another I'm pretty sure Hokajasama will be pretty upset and not just her but Sakura as well. Both teens turn pale hearing that it's true that when Tsunade is angry all hell breaks loose and Sakura she has follow in her master's footsteps and earn a few traits from her somehow Sasuke was more scarce seeing Sakura angry than Tsunade. Kakashi sensei I'm telling you the truth we weren't going to fight for real I swear, Naruto pleaded. Yeah it was just a sparring match, Sasuke said coolly. Please don't tell Granny Tsunade, Naruto shouted scare. Please don't tell Sakura. Sasuke shouted scare. Kakashi sweat dropped but he chuckled seeing that they were dead scare at the two kunoichis but who wouldn't with those tempers. Okay I won't say a word your secret is safe with me now I came here to tell you that Hokajasama wants to see the two of you in her office. Both blink while a spark of happiness was shining in their eyes. This could mean that she has a mission for us finally, Naruto thought happy. If it's about a mission then this will be my first mission since I came back, Sasuke thought. We'll all see you later I have a mission so I'll see you guys later, with that said he vanished in a cloud of smoke. Let's go to Granny's office, Naruto said while Sasuke nodded. They left the training grounds and headed to the Hokage's tower. A couple of minutes later, they arrived at the Hokage's tower. They knock on the door to the Hokage's office and heard a female voice said, Come in. They open the door and enter the office. They saw a woman who looks like she was in her middle 20s, but she wasn't really in her 20s with blonde hair tied in two ponytails and brown eyes. You wanted to see us, Granny? Naruto said. Yes Naruto Sasuke I did call you too I have a mission for the three of you. All right finally I was getting so bored, Naruto said cheery. Okay if we have a mission then shouldn't we wait for Sakura? Sasuke said. Well yes but she's still in her daily training it's going to take her a while to finish but she will join you later. Now before I explain the mission, you all know that we have been keeping tabs on Orochimaru. Hearing the snake Sanin's name Naruto glare thinking about him while Sasuke stood calm and quiet. We have found out about his plans and what he's after. This got the attention of both ninjas. Orochimaru went to Tokyo most likely he's seeking the power of the legendary silver crystal. Huh silver crystal? Naruto thought like something inside of him click at the mention of the name like he has heard it before. What is this silver crystal? Asked Sasuke. It's a very powerful crystal it has incredible power, Tsunade said. Figures why he wants it, Sasuke said with a snort. Tsunade nodded. Yes but there is a good side to this Sasuke. Sasuke continued listening while Naruto finally snapped from his trance. The one who possessed the silver crystal is Sailor Moon. Sasuke raised an eyebrow hearing her name while Naruto's eyes widened in shock he felt into another trance. I think I heard from her before isn't she the one that fights monsters in Tokyo? Sasuke said. Tsunade nodded. That's right she along with her soldiers the sailor senshis defend Tokyo from evil. Well that's good it's not going to be easy for Orochimaru to get the crystal he'll have to fight her in order to get it, Sasuke said. I'm not going to take that risk there is also a bad side to this. Great, Sasuke muttered. If the crystal is used in the wrong hands it will be bad real bad, that's why I'm sending you two to Tokyo find Sailor Moon and help her in any way you can. Sasuke nodded. Are we clear Naruto Naruto? Tsunade said looking at the day's blonde. Naruto was still in a trance. What's going on Silver Crystal Sailor Moon Sailor Senshis I never heard of them before but I feel like I know them why is that? Man talk about serious deja vu. Naruto did you listen to a word I just said? Tsunade shouted at the top of her lungs. Naruto snapped from his trance and looked at the pissed Hokage while Sasuke's sweat dropped. What? Tsunade calmed down before she punched the daylights out of the blonde, I said did you listen a word I just said? I think so, he said a sounding a little unsure, something about Sailor Moon. 
Tsunade sighed while rubbing her forehead she could feel a headache coming on. I said that you two are going to Tokyo and help Sailor Moon protect the Silver Crystal from Orochimaru this is an A rank mission but it might turn into an S rank mission depending on the situation. Wait Hokajasama can you give us a description to what Sailor Moon looks like? Sasuke said. I'm glad that you ask Sasuke however we don't have much information on her our information network said that she's a teenager and she has been seen in the area of Jubin that's the only lead we have on her the rest is up to you to find out who she is. We understand granny, Naruto said. Wait there's more, Tsunade said. This mission is going to be an undercover mission which means you will be wearing civilians clothing, she then gave them two backpacks and ids. You two will be exchange students from China so here are your ids. I'm Koshiro Kyo, Naruto said reading the id, and I'm Yamoto Saki, Sasuke said. Right now your civilian's clothing is in the backpacks also I have added a couple of ambu cloaks and mask. Why? Naruto said puzzle. Remember that you are undercover you can't let any civilians know of your identities no matter what happened no one must know that you are ninjas from Konoha are we clear? The two nodded. I know it's going to take both of you to find Sailor Moon and Orochimaru is already in Tokyo so be careful and don't worry about Sakura she will join you on the mission. All right let's go Sasuke, just before they headed to the door. Wait Naruto can I have a word with you? Oh sure? Sasuke left the office although he had a pretty good idea what Tsunade was going to talk to him about. What is it granny? Tsunade sweat dropped, can you stop calling me that for once? Sorry I guess I can't, she sighed, whatever now Naruto. This is a very important mission it's your first one since you got back from your training with Jiraiya and it's also Sasuke's first mission since he returned to the village I want you to keep an eye on him remember that he became a missing nin on his own choice and the council is still arguing that he should be executed for his treachery so please for your own sake if he tries anything that might jeopardize the mission you know what to do are we clear? She said in a very serious tone. Naruto nodded slowly. Yes I understand granny don't worry I will keep my eye on him I promised. Good then you were dismissed, Naruto nodded and left the office while Tsunade sighed. Good luck you two and be careful, Naruto was so happy he finally had a mission after his return from his training trip what he doesn't know is that this mission will change his life forever. Tokyo Japan, location Juban region Hakawa Jinja Temple. In front of the temple stood five teenage girls they were wearing school uniforms. Only three were wearing the uniform the blouse color white and long blue skirt one was wearing the same uniform but it was color white with light brown and the other the last one was color white and black. One girl had short blue hair and blue eyes her name is Mizuno Amy she was also known as Sailor Mercury the Senshi of Ice. Another girl wearing the white and blue uniform had long blonde and blue eyes with a red ribbon tied on the back of her head her name is Aino Monaco also known as Sailor Venus the Senshi of Love. The third girl wearing the same white and blue uniform also had blonde hair but she had her hair tied two pigtails and two buns on her head they look like a pair of meatballs she also had blue eyes she is Sakino Usagi also known as Sailor Moon leader of the Senshis and possessor of the silver crystal. The girl with the white and light brown uniform was the tallest of the five she had brown hair tied on a single ponytail with green eyes and had a pair of rose earrings she is Kino Makoto also known as Sailor Jupiter the Senshi of Lighting. The final girl who had the white and black uniform had long raven hair and black eyes she is Hino Rei also known as Sailor Mars the Senshi of Fire. Next to them were two cats one was male color white with amethyst eyes and the other was female color black with brown eyes both of the cats had the symbol of a golden crescent moon on their foreheads. Together they were the Sailor Senshi's champions of love and justice and they fight to protect the earth from evil. Right now they were in the middle of a Senshi meeting. So what's this meeting all about? Ask an annoyed Usagi she was expecting to go to the arcade after finishing school. As I said before when I call you all last night I had a vision a bad one a real bad one, Ray said in a worry tone. Oh come on Ray it can't be worse than your past visions, Monaco said as she looked at the raven hair teen who had a worry look on her face she gulped a little, can it? Or maybe your vision is a fluke, Usagi snorted her comment made Ray a little irritated. Usagi my visions are never wrong. She shouted to the meatball head girl. Oh please we just recently defeated Galaxia so why does a new enemy has to come? Usagi said irritated ever since she defeated Galaxia she was very happy that the evil was finally over, she can finally have the average life of a teenage girl and also spend more time with her boyfriend Chiba Mamoru. 
Rei was about to yell at Usagi but she was cut off by Luna the black cat. All right that's enough you two, Luna shouted. Now we must first discuss the reason why we came to this meeting and that is to listen to Rei's vision. Yes Rei tells us about this new vision of yours, Amy the blue hair girl said. Yeah Rei tells us already, Makoto the tall brunette said. The raven hair priestess stood quiet for a while making a certain meatball hair girl irritated. Ray is this vision of yours really that horrible? Artemis the white cat spoke. She shook her head, I'm sorry for keeping everyone on the edge of your seats especially you Usagi. Usagi sighed, just tell us about this vision already. Ray nodded. All right I will tell you every detail in my vision, well it goes like this. Ray's vision. They were in a large icy field somewhere in the North Antarctic it was very cold the temperature wad below Cerro. In the snowy field stood Eternal Sailor Moon beside her was Tuxedo Common who was also known as Prince Endymion of the Earth and Chiba Mamoru her boyfriend, on the left side stood the inner senshis, Mars, Mercury, Jupiter and Venus. And on the right side stood were the outer senshis, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto and Saturn. But they weren't the only ones in the battlefield on the far right of the outers stood they were four strangers wearing brown coats they were in a fighting stance, she couldn't clearly see their faces but she could tell that they were on their side. All of the senshis were exhausted especially Sailor Moon who seems completely out of strength. In front of them stood the biggest creature they have ever seen, it looked like a giant dragon with two heads and two huge wings it was color black with purple it had piercing crimson eyes. Finally it had the biggest claws they've ever seen they were so sharp they could cut trough light. All of the senshis fired their attacks on the creature but it didn't have any effect at all not even a scratch, the creature was about to fire a powerful attack when suddenly one of the strangers was glowing with a silver energy. The creature fire a massive blast powerful enough to destroy an entire land, the massive blast was about to reach the senshis when suddenly everything turned black. End of vision. A huge silence fell upon the temple. All four girls were speechless no one said a word they didn't know what to say or think. A dragon that's so medieval cliché it would have been original if it was a giant octopus or arc whale, a Temis said breaking the silence. They all sweat dropped at his comment and gave the white cat an annoyed look. I'm sorry I was just trying to light the mood, Artemis said while sighing. It's all right Artemis that was some vision Ray, Luna said. Strong I don't think that's the appropriate word to call it more like dead scary, Usagi said freaking out. I agree, Monaco said while looking at Ray. Ray this is the worst vision you have ever had. Makoto was worried, does this mean that we are going to die? Now wait a minute everyone, Amy interjected, it's true it's a horrible vision but let's not forget that Ray, past's visions didn't come true because we were able to prevent them from happening and I'm sure we can prevent this one from happening too. Ray finally smiled. Yes I have the visions in order for us to do whatever we can to stop them. Yeah you're right Ray. Makoto said also cheering up. We'll do our best so that bad vision never comes true. Yeah we will triumph goodness and love always win, Monaco said while raising a fist. Luna smiled. The last part was corny but it's the truth. Of course we can't give up no matter how bad things turn out, Monaco said while giving the victory sing. Yeah you don't give up Monaco especially when it comes down to chasing boys, Artemis said with a smirk. Monaco frowned at his comment, that's it no tuna for you tonight. What Monaco I was just kidding come on you don't really mean it, the white ape pleaded. No tuna for you, Monaco said while blowing him a raspberry. Everybody started laughing for a moment Usagi was finally calmed down the vision really scare her she was more relief. I'm sorry guys I was so uneasy we just defeated Galaxia and she was pretty strong and if that thing in your vision ray is stronger than her I come I, I, Usagi said while tears feel from her eyes. Ray snorted, oh don't tell me that you're going to give up meatball head, we were just talking about not giving up and you're crying because you think you should give up give me a break. Amy sighed, what ray is trying to say is that you should never give up it's your will to save everyone that gives you the strength though not give up. I agree too. Makoto said. Thank you everyone thank you so much I'm feeling better now, Usagi said as she started drying her tears. There's still something that bothers me, Makoto said. About what? Ask Amy. The four strangers that appear on the vision, I mean are they friends or enemies and who are they, Makoto said. 
I don't know who they were I couldn't see their faces but I'm sure they are our allies I saw that they were going to attack that monster, Ray said. Well I'm sure we'll find out in due time, that's enough for today we should getting back, Luna said. Right, they all replied. Bye guys I'm going to the arcade, Usagi said as she started to leave the temple. But Usagi don't you have an English test tomorrow? Amy said. Ah oh well, I don't think so, she gave a goofy grin. Come on I'll help you study, Amy said. Thanks Amy but I don't want to study, Usagi said with a frown. You have to study or your grades will fall. Fine oh I wanted to go to the arcade and drink a chocolate milkshake. The meatball hair girl whine. Bye everyone, Amy said. Bye, they all replied. While they were leaving the temple Artemis was still winning to Monaco because she wasn't going to give him any of his favorite snack. In the end Monaco apologized to him and promised to give him tuna if he says that she was the prettiest of all the senshis and he did told her that and she couldn't be any happier. Tokyo International Airport Tokyo International Airport was always crowded since Japan is one of the most overpopulated countries in the world. At that moment a departure gate opened a large crowd was were exiting the departure gate, a few minutes later a pair of teens exited the gate. One had short black hair in the form of a chicken butt he was wearing a pair of sunglasses, a black leather jacket he was wearing jeans that had two holes in the knee section and a pair of army black boots any people would think of him as a rock star. The second teen was wearing a red cap round sunglasses a white t-shirt that had the words Pokemon gotta catch em all printed in yellow letters a pair of jeans and white sneakers. All right we finally arrived at Tokyo Granny Tsunade wasn't kidding that this place was overpopulated. The teen with red cap said who was obviously Naruto or more precise Koshiro Kyo his undercover name. No kidding. The black haired teen mutter who was Sasuke or Yamoto Saki. Sass, I mean Saki let's go to the train terminal to go to the Juban district and forget that Granny Tsunade made me in charge of the mission so you have to listen to me okay? Yeah yeah. Sasuke said with growl. What was she thinking putting him in charge of the mission? He still couldn't believe that Naruto was the leader of the mission but it was an order from the Hokage and he couldn't go against her word he had no choice but to follow the blonde's orders. As they reached the train station they bought their tickets and waited for the train to arrive. Um, Naruto? Yeah? Well since you're going to be in charge of the mission then, I'm going to trust you. He couldn't believe he just said that. Ha huh, thanks we'll find Sailor Moon in no time. I know I'm going to regret saying that I mean putting Naruto in charge of a mission it's entering a cage full of hungry lions, Sasuke thought. The train arrive and the two enter the train follow by a large crowd and they took their seats, when the train left the station they were impressed at how fast the train was going. Hey Sasuke. Naruto whisper. What is it, it's just that, he then look at his t-shirt, what the hell is Pokemon? HN, was the reply of the Uchiha telling him that he didn't know. Naruto shrugged his shoulders while Sasuke opened his jacket and looked at his shirt it was color black and it had humanoid skeleton with long hair holding a bass guitar on top of the skeleton there were yellow letters. Iron Maiden what is that? Naruto was looking at one of the windows of the train he was so amazed how big the city was he couldn't be any happier he had an important mission and he also visits a big city. I wonder if they sell ramen here and what kind of brand? He then thought about his dream. I also wonder if I'll find any clues about my dream I really want to know what it means maybe I will find the answers in Juban. As the blonde ninja continues to think its destination until it reaches the ninja's stop Juban district where they hoping to find Sailor Moon and the Senshis. In an abandoned warehouse near the district of Juban. Five girls wearing sailor type uniforms were firing at some of the targets that were hanging on the wall of the warehouse. Each girl fire an attack at one of the targets. Luna and Artemis told them about the warehouse so the girls decided to use the place as a training spot after hearing Ray's vision if there's a new evil coming they will be prepared for it. As the senshis continued to fire their attacks a certain senshi was getting annoyed and tired, she didn't saw the point of all this training he still thought that there was no evil coming. Eternal Sailor Moon groaned after firing an attack and fell on her knees. Oh why do we have to be training? Ask a tire Sailor Moon. The rest of the senshis turned to her while sweat dropping. I don't know maybe because I had a vision about a two-headed giant dragon about to kill us, Sailor Mars the senshi wearing the red skirt retorted. Yes if there is a new evil coming we have to be prepared for it, Sailor Mercury the senshi wearing the aqua blue skirt said. Come on Sailor Moon we are not going to wait around for this new enemy to appear we have to be ready, 
Sailor Jupiter the Senshi wearing the green skirt said. If we don't prepare ourselves for the enemy they are going to have the advantage in strength we can't let that happen. Sailor Venus the Senshi wearing the orange skirt said. But there hasn't been a Yoma attack in a long time, Moon Wine. Would you stop whining and get serious? Mars shouted. We are training right now to fight TNE enemy and right now you are not acting like a leader you're acting like a scare child. Fine I'll get serious I'm pissed because for once in my life I want to have a normal peaceful life with my friends and boyfriend and now another enemy has to show up and destroy the peace that we have foe so hard to achieve. Moon shouted with tears in her eyes. The Senshis were shocked at Moon's sudden outburst even Mars was shocked. They have never seen her so upset before it seems that she has been keeping the stress bottle up for so long. I'm sorry guys I don't know what came over me I just want the fighting to end. I know I'm being selfish but I'm being selfish for a good reason don't you guys think after everything we've been through all the enemies we fought don't you think we deserve some peace and quiet? Yes I am tired of all the fighting but we can't forget that protecting the earth is our destiny, Mercury said. I'm tired from fighting too but I don't fight just to protect the earth but to protect my friends too, Jupiter said. It's our destiny to fight evil because we're warriors and if we don't fight how are we going to maintain the peace that we desire for, Venus said. That's right, Mars said while putting her hand on Moon's shoulder. I'm sorry for yelling at you and calling you a scare child. No you were right I wasn't acting like a leader from now on I'm going to act like a true leader, Moon said while drying her tears. Really I will like to see that, Mars said with a smirk. Moon nodded as she looked at the few target sings, Silver Moon Power Kiss. The attack destroyed the remaining targets in no time. The Senshi's jaw were wide open at what they just saw except for Mars who was smiling. That's more like it, she said proudly. Yeah I'll say, a male voice said. The Senshi's turn around and saw a 21-year-old man wearing a green jacket a black shirt white long pants and white shoes. He was Chiba Mamoru Usagi's boyfriend he gave the Senshi's a smile. I see you guys have been busy, Sailor Moon rushed towards him and gave him a big embrace which he gladly accepted. Mamachan. Moon said lovingly. Hey Yusako. Well she's back to normal, Venus said. The Snaeus nodded. You guys have been training hard how about we call it a day, Luna said as she came with Artemis. Yeah how about we go to the arcade and order a milkshake, Mamoru said. Yeah. Moon agreed immediately. The Senshis transform into their civilian's form, and left the warehouse with Mamoru and two cats. Downtown Jubin. This is impossible, cry a frustrated Naruto. No one said this was going to be an easy mission, Sasuke said. I mean we have been searching the city for hours and still no Sailor Moon, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. Sailor Moon is a superhero she will only show up when there's big commotion. Oh I got it I'll transform into a big ugly monster, Naruto said. You already done that, Sasuke said with a smirk. What's that supposed to mean? cry an angry Naruto. Just messing with you Naruto but you can't do that. And why not? Hokage's orders we are in an undercover mission which means we can't create a commotion. Then what are we going to do? Sasuke sighed. Looks like we have no choice we'll have to put a stop on our search. I guess, Naruto said while his stomach growled. Oh man I'm hungry I haven't eaten since we got here. Naruto can I make a suggestion? Huh a suggestion do you a place where they sell ramen? No I was thinking since it's going to be difficult to find Sailor Moon maybe we should start looking for a job. Why should we Granny Tsunade gave us enough money? The Uchiha groaned. Have you forgotten Hokage's orders she told us to find a job as long as we are on the mission, so we don't waste her her money. Naruto sighed. Yeah that's definitely her she'll use the money for gambling even if she will lose it because she has never won a single game. We only use the money for transportation and the apartment the rest will have to go from the money that we earn in our jobs. All right let's go, once again his stomach growl. Sasuke can we find something to eat first? Fine you go find something to eat, Sasuke said as he turned the other way. Hey where do you think you're going Sasuke? To find a job, the Uchiha reply coolly. Not without me I'm supposed to keep an eye on you, Sasuke sighed. Naruto I won't turn my back on you and join Orochimaru again just find yourself something to eat I'll wait for you at the apartment. You better not do anything sneaky. Of course I'm a ninja sneakiness is what I do, Sasuke said with a smirk as he left. 
Ha ha very funny, he said with a sweat dropped and he stomach growl yet again, I better find a place to eat before I die of hunger. The two ninjas went separate ways to find a job, since they will be staying in Tokyo for a while might a well make a living with no lux of the whereabouts of Sailor Moon it's going to be a long mission. Crown Arcade Usagi and the rest of the senshis were sitting at the cafe area, after a day of hard training they decided to chill out and relax. The arcade is Usagi's favorite hangout place she also play her favorite Sailor V game and also have a chocolate milkshake. Oh that was the last of my change I'm so close of beating the Sailor V game, Usagi said with a sigh. You know what they say practices makes perfect, Amy said. You're on E to talk Amy I mean you never played video games before in your life and when you start playing you play like a pro, Usagi said. Oh come on Usagi stop it I'm not that good, Amy said with a blush. Well that's because Amy is smart unlike you, Ray said. What say that again? Usagi retorted. You heard me meatball head, the raven hair girl answered back. Take that back you hothead, no way, fire witch. Meatball brain. I know what you are but what am I? A meatball head, grr, and once again Ray and Usagi were having one of their usual arguing. They start yelling and call each other's names while blowing raspberries. Mamoru, Makoto, Monaco and Amy sighed while sweat dropping. They never change do they but you know what they say best friends argue a lot. Monaco dies to break their argument. Hey guys I've been thinking should we tell Setsuna and the others about the vision? Everyone turned to the blonde even Ri and Usagi stopped their arguing. Well that depends on how serious this new enemy might be, Amy said. That won't be necessary. Everyone look at Ray. But Ray maybe we should tell them just in case, Makoto said. And I said it won't be necessary because they will eventually find out on their own. We'll be ready for them, Mamoru said. They all nodded in agreement in that instant a young man who seems to be the same age as Mamoru came to the gang with six milkshakes he had dark blonde hair dark eyes and he was wearing an apron he obviously work at the arcade his name is Matoki. He's a good friend of Mamoru and the girls he runs the arcade and he was also one of the reasons why Usagi came to the arcade because she used to have a big crush on him the same goes for Makoto. Here you go six milkshakes with the works, Matoki said placing the milkshakes on the table. Thanks Motokasen, Usagi said. Oh I love your milkshakes Matoki, Monaco said cheery. Thanks you guys are my best customers, reply Matoki with a smile. By the way Matoki have you found someone else to help you with arcade? Mamoru said. Well not yet I can run the arcade on my own but it wouldn't hurt to have some help, Matoki said. Well if I didn't have a full time on the restaurant I will gladly help, Mamoru said. Oh no that's okay Mamorison I appreciate it it's okay I already told you I'm doing fine on my own. Okay, Mamoru said. The girls didn't said a word since they were enjoying their milkshakes especially Usagi. Near the Hakawa Jinja Temple Sasuke was standing in front of a large stairway that leads to the Hakawa Jinja Temple, he heard rumors from people that the Hakawa Temple it's a place that sell good luck charms he thought that maybe this place was good to get a job so he didn't wasted time and climbed the stairs. That's when he saw two teens leaving the temple, one was a girl around 17 she was wearing a red blouse and green skirt with red shoes. The other teen was a boy with the same age with light messy brown hair and a pair of big round glasses wearing a white neck button shirt and black long pants obviously he was the nerdy type. The Uchiha decided oh ask them about the temple and a certain moon senshi. Um, excuse me can I ask you something? Sasuke said. Huh? The teen girl said she immediately blushed at the sight of him because she thought he was very cute and attractive, yes what is it? Is this the Hikawa Jinja temple? Oh yes it is have you come to buy a good luck charm? She gave him a dreamy look. This caused a certain teen boy to be very jealous with the look she was giving the Uchiha or the kinds that says you're hot let's go out. Okay who are you buster? The nerdy teen said while pointing a finger to Sasuke. The girl became irritated by his sudden outburst. U M I N O. But Naru you don't know who he is he could be an evil alien in disguise, Amino said. A uh, what? Sasuke thought. Oh please give me a break Amino, Naru said, you're just jealous. Well yeah I was if it was Sailor Moon the one talking to me wouldn't you be jealous? That got Sasuke's attention maybe they knew something about the Moon Senshi. 
I'm sorry for being to cause your argument my name is Yamoto Saki I'm new here in Tokyo you mentioned Sailor Moon I just heard so much from her wherever I go could you tell me more about her well if it's okay with you? Amino smirk. Ha huh, you came to the right person. He immediately pulled a small black book from his shirt pocket the book had a golden crescent moon on the front. Naru sweat dropped. Oh yeah I forgot that you are a Sailor Moon maniac. Amino began to read his notebook. Let's see her name is Sailor Moon aka Moon Princess she wears a sailor type uniform short blue skirt. Sasuke snorted. Short blue skirt sounds like a pervert's dream. Amino continued. Red high boots her height is 5 feet 2 her weight is 110 pounds and she's between the ages of 16 to 19 and she only shows up when monsters appear. Between the ages 16 and 19 just like the Hokage said she's a teenager, Sasuke thought. Naru nodded. Yeah now that you mention it I haven't seen her in a while since there hasn't been any monster. Sasuke raised an eyebrow, monsters you mean real monsters? I know it sounds impossible but I have seen them, a long time ago my mother was posses by a monster and Sailor Moon defeated the monster and saved my mother, Naru said. I see thank you for your information, no problem I'm always glad to help a future Sailor Moon fan, Amino said. Sasuke's sweat dropped at his comment. Goodbye Saki-san, Naru said while leaving with Amino. As Sasuke saw then leaving he noticed that they were holding hands, he didn't know why but for some strange reason he imagined himself holding the girl's hand only difference that the image of Naru was replaced by a certain pink hair Kunoichi. Sasuke shook his head while blushing he continued to climb the stairs of the temple. When he got there he was very amazed of how beautiful the scenery was he saw the beautiful cherry blossoms tree and the temple was very impressive. The Uchiha saw a small bald old man wearing a shrine priest uniform talking to two teenage girls wearing school uniforms. Oh come on why you two don't want to work in my temple, the old man said. Um, no thanks I already have a job, yeah same for me. Please if you accept I'll introduce you to my apprentice Uniachi, eh and I don't know if that's his name, he's very cute you know. No thanks we have to go. The girls said in unison they began to leave when they noticed Sasuke and that's where the tables were turned. When the two girls lay eyes on the Uchiha their faces became as red as a cherry oh put it more simply they went gaga over him. Hi, one girl said while blushing. Hi, the other girl said while blushing. The two teen girls stood staring at him and blushing they didn't said a word they continued to stare at the Uchiha. Finally Sasuke became nervous with the stares he was receiving from both girls and broke the silence. I have to talk to the old man, why do you work here? Um, I don't, the girls sighed in disappointment they started to leave. The old man's jaw fell to the ground he grinned while thinking. This kid is a girl's magnet if he works for me I'll have the temple full of beautiful girls he he he. He cleared his throat while he went to the Uchiha. Welcome to the Hikawa Jinja temple can I help you? Well actually I hope you can I'm wondering if you can give me a job? Yes. The old man shouted happy like he was reading his mind. Yes I will give you a job. Really, Sasuke said surprise he wasn't expecting he was going to find his first job so easily. Of course you will start tomorrow by the way my name is Solhino, the old man said. Yamoto Saki. Sasuke said. I'll write Saki-san tomorrow I will introduce you to my granddaughter and my pupil. Thank you very much, no thank you, grandpa said while grinning. As Sasuke left the temple he smiled at how fast he got a job, I wonder if Naruto found a job already. Near the crown arcade a very hungry Naruto while his stomach was growling like a rabid dog there was so many places in Tokyo since it was a big city there was only one dish he was craving for and it was his favorite ramen. He could eat all of the dishes offer in Tokyo but he only wanted to eat ramen. Ah isn't there a place where they sell ramen? At that moment the doors to the arcade open show five girls and a guy they were leaving not noticing the hungry blonde teen. Besides them there were two cats they were about to leave when suddenly. I'm so hungry, Naruto cried he then noticed the two cats, hey it's a cat. Poor kid he's hungry, Artemis thought he looked at Luna who was staring at the blonde teen deeply. Naruto saw how cute the two cats were but there was something that caught his attention their golden crescent moons on their forehead. Hey that's the same symbol that woman in my dream has, Naruto thought. Luna, came the voice of Usagi from the end of the street. Artemis, came the voice of Monaco from the end of the street. 
The cats left to their masters but not before Luna gave a last glance at the blonde teen. Naruto was about to call the cats but his hunger attack again. Ah damn it I have to eat something or I will die. Naruto saw the building and the Sing Red Crown Arcade. Hmm maybe they sell ramen here. When he entered the arcade he was very amazed about the many machines that were available. Oh this place doesn't look like it serves ramen. He finally saw a man cleaning one of the nearby tables. Um, excuse me? Huh? Matoki said noticing the blonde teen. Yes can I help you? Do you have food? Well I do serve snacks this is also a cafe, Matoki said. Really, then I'll have a big bowl of ramen with everything on it. What? Matoki said puzzle. Yeah you know ramen, Naruto said happy. Yeah I know what ramen is it's just that I don't serve that here, Matoki said. The answer hit Naruto like a big slap to his face. No why? Why? Matoki's sweat dropped at his outburst looks like he wanted to eat ramen so badly. Look I don't serve ramen but I know place where they serve it, Matoki said. Really where? He shouted happy. It's called Jin's Palace it's located at the end of this street, Matoki said. Oh thank you so much oh by the way my name is Uzu, I mean it's Koshiro Kyo. I'm Matoki nice to meet you, nice to meet you too, well I better go I'm hungry. He then left in a flash leaving a sweat dropped Matoki behind. Wow all that hunger and he can still run with so much energy. In an unknown region in a very dark and humid cave it was very quiet the only thing that could be here was the screeching of the bats, three figures stood in the middle of the dark chamber. Nice place although I prefer my palace it's darker, a woman's voice said who was obviously Beryl. This is only a temporary hideout so just the enjoy the place, a sinister voice said who belonged to Orochimaru. Well should we get started? Beryl said. Yes I have already had my plan to steal the crystal, Sailor Moon won't know what hit her, Orochimaru said. Don't underestimate her she's stronger than she looks, Beryl hiss. It doesn't matter my plan is flawless. Orochimaru said. We'll see, she then hiss, unfortunately it's not just the crystal I need but energy as well. This caught Kabuto's attention. Energy? Kabuto said. Yes human energy. Human energy barrel are you saying that you can steal human energy the same a vampire sucks human blood? Orochimaru said. Well sort off but it's not just me but my master Medalia as well. Orochimaru chuckle, how amusing you really are an interesting person barrel. That's why you are stealing the crystal from the moon wench as part of your deal so I could revive her with its power, Beryl said. Yes I know just remember to keep your end of the bargain. Of course, she said in a hiss she then look at the ceiling of the cave where there was many bats she then fire a dark beam hitting one of the bats the bat transformed into a giant bat Yoma. Vampira come forth. Yes my queen, vampire said. Time to steal energy but do it frequently I don't want to attract attention to the senshis at least not yet, she grin evilly. As you command my queen, Vampira said as she vanish. Orochimaru saw the bat Yoma and smirk. You really are an interesting person Beryl, then it's settle while you gather energy I will begin my plan to steal the crystal let's go Kabuto. Yes Orochimaru-sama, when the two ninjas left Beryl growl. I don't trust you Orochimaru but I don't have a choice I will follow your game. Dot for now. Outside of the cave, Orochimaru sama, I don't trust Beryl. I don't trust her either, but revenge is always I have approved, and besides Sailor Moon and the Senshis, it's her concern, not hers. I see, and what about the crystal? I will steal it eventually, I must have its power, that's why I want you, Kabuto, to keep an eye on her, make sure she doesn't get the chance to steal it, because I have plans too for the crystal before giving it to her. As you wish, now I must rest, resurrecting Beryl have drained a lot of my chakra. But I'm amazed how you were able to perfect the resurrection jutsu, Kabuto said. It's nothing with the crystal I could resurrect an entire army with its power that's why I must have it. You will have it Orochimaru-sama. The two ninjas left vanish in a cloud of smoke little they didn't know that they were being watched by the bat Yoma. I must tell Queen Beryl, Vampira said as she vanish. At Usagi's house Usagi was ready to go to bed she was wearing her pink bunny pajamas and lie down on her bed. I'm so tired all that training really took a lot of me if there is a new enemy coming I will fight it with everything I had there going to get moon dusted right Luna. She look at the black cat who it was all quiet. Hey Luna hello earth to Luna. She waved her hand to in front of the black cat's face. Luna finally snapped from her thinking. Um, 
Yes Usagi what is it? Usagi sighed. Never mind what's wrong Luna. What do you mean? Ask a puzzle Luna. You've been a lot quieter since we left the arcade are you okay? Oh it's nothing, come on tell me there's something wrong with you? Usagi said worry. Usagi you are worrying too much I mean it now get to bed, Luna said. The meatball head girl didn't believe her but she ignored it since she was very tired, fine good night, she then went to bed. Good night Usagi. Luna said she got back to her thinking. That boy at the arcade there's something about him something familiar I better tell Artemis tomorrow. The black cat lie down next to Usagi and went to sleep. After all tomorrow was another day. Downtown Jubin. Two teens were walking wearing school uniforms it seems that today was their first day in Jubin High School, but unfortunately one of the teens a certain blonde was upset about going to school. Uzumaki Naruto didn't like the idea of going to school because it meant he had to study and do homework and since he barely graduate from Ninja Academy he didn't like the idea of going to another school. Why do we have to go to school I was glad when I graduate from Ninja Academy so why do I have to go to another one and it's a non-ninja school to make it worse. Sasuke groaned. Quit your whining it's part of the undercover mission and you know very well why we're going. To study, he whined. Sasuke stopped walking while giving his teammate an irritated look. Don't tell me you forgot what I told you yesterday. I guess so, Naruto said with a goofy grin. The Uchiha sighed. Look I'm going to explain to you again you remember the Hokage told us that Sailor Moon is teenager and she was always seen in Jubin do you know where I'm getting at with this? Naruto gave a thoughtful look before snapping his fingers. Oh I get it Sailor Moon might be in Jubin High because she's a teenager and she's always in Jubin wow Sasuke how do you do it? It's call thinking maybe you should try it once in a while, Sasuke said with a smirk. What are you saying I'm stupid, shouted an angry Naruto. What was your first clue I guess you do think after all. Grr, jerk, loser, idiot, geek, teme, dobi. And so Naruto and Sasuke continued to have one of their usual arguments, as they always do proving how good friends they were they continued to walk towards Jubin High School where they expect to find a certain moon senshi. In a dark alley an older man was enjoying a cigarette when suddenly he heard a strange noise coming from the depths of the dark alley. Who's there? Nobody answer he sighed. I must be going out of my mind he then saw the bat Yoma Vampiria appearing in front of him. Ah who are you what do you want? My name is Vampiria as for what I want, your energy. She then bite him on his neck sucking his energy in the process. The man fell unconscious and Vampira grin. This is too easy, she then vanished. Jubin High School Class A 2 10th grade The classroom was full of students who were talking and gossiping. The girls were talking about boys since that were their favorite topic the boys were talking about girls video games and other boyish themes. At that moment the classroom door opened and an older man came who seems to be in his early 30s he had black with glasses brown eyes and he was wearing a brown suit with a blue tie. He closed the door and put his briefcase on the teacher's desk he was obviously the teacher. All right everyone settle down now we will begin class shortly but first we have some exchange students from China so let's give them a big welcome. The door to the classroom open and two teens enter and step next to the teacher. Would you like to introduce yourselves? I'm Koshiro Kyo, the blonde teen with blue eyes said. I'm Yamoto Saki, the teen with black hair and black eyes said. Good I'm Mr. Camila I will be your teacher now where can I seat you too? He then began checking the available seats in the classroom he then noticed an empty seat on the far left corner of the classroom. Hum I guess Hotaru must be sick today since she's never absent. Kiyo-san you take you will seat in the seat next to the one in the left corner, an next to Hotaru, and as for Saki-san. At that moment the girls of the classroom started arguing that they wanted the black hair teen seated next to them. Sasuke's sweat dropped while Naruto growled. Damn it why does Sasuke has to take all the girl's attention? Class that's enough, Mr. Camila shouted, Saki-san you take the seat next to Kilia. The girl named Kilia gave a high cheer while giving the victory sing and the rest of the girls sighed in disappointment while the boys were jealous at the Uchiha. Now Kiyo-san Saki-san take your seats so we can begin today's class. The two teens took their seats and pay attention to the teacher as he began the class Naruto growl all the girls were blushing and giving the Uchiha dreamy looks. Sasuke decided to put his plan into motion he activated his Sharingan and look at all of the girls of the classroom. Damn she's not here oh well that's one classroom down at least. 
Jubin Cafeteria It was lunchtime at Jubin Cafeteria, the favorite part of the school well almost all of the students agree on that. The place was really crowded and all of the students began to eat their lunches, in one of the tables cafeteria Usagi, Amy, Makoto and Monaco. Usagi was eating one of her mother's rice balls Amy was eating a sandwich Makoto was eating one of her muffins and Monaco was eating a rice ball too. Hey Usagi want to eat one of my homemade muffins? Makoto said. You bet, Usagi said cheery while taking the muffin. Don't eat too fast Usagi you're going to choke, Amy said. Yeah be careful, Monaco replied. I'm fine, Usagi said as she began to stuff the muffin and the rice ball at that instant she began to choke she drank some water and she felt better. See I told you, Amy said worry, sorry I guess I ate a little too fast. Only a little you were eating as fast as a vacuum cleaner sucks dust, Makoto joked. Haha <laughs> very funny, Usagi said. Monaco laugh a little and they continued to eat their lunches. Naru one of Usagi's friends came to them. Usagi hi, oh Naru hi, hey Naru, the girls said in unison. Hey you guys don't mind if I join you, no of course not the more the merrier, Usagi said happy. Thanks Usagi, Naru said while seating down on the table. At that moment a certain nerd appear next to Usagi. Hey Usagi want to hear the, oh wwww, he didn't finish as Usagi punch his face. Uminoi told you not to sneak up on me like that. Sorry, he said while rubbing his face. So what is it that you want to tell to Usagi Amino? Amy said. Just for you to know the latest gossip in school. Everyone's sweat dropped at his comment Amino will never change. So what is the big gossip? Usagi said less interested. Well there are new students here exchange students from China to be exact from the 10th grade. Monaco sighed. That's it you came here to tell us about new 10th graders look Amino I would have approved if it were boys from the 12th or 11th grade but we are not interested in boys younger than us. An Usagi and the other are in the 11th grade. Yeah I agree we don't go for younger boys, Makoto said. Everybody sweat dropped at their comment. Usagi decided to ignore the two girls and pay attention to Umino's gossip. So Amino what else do you know about them? Well their names are Koshiro Kyo and Yamoto Saki. Before Usagi said anything a teen trip near their table. Oh no my cup of noodles is ruined, the blonde teen who was obviously Naruto said. Hey are you okay? Usagi said kneeling down the fallen teen. Yeah I'm okay but my cup noodles is ruined. Usagi helped him got back to his feet when he saw the girl that helped him he lock eyes with her something inside of him trigger he stood frozen looking at her. All of the sudden he felt all kinds of emotions sadness happiness like he has missed her his entire life even if this was the first time he was meeting her. Usagi was in the same boat once she looked at his face she stood frozen and felt sadness happiness like she has missed him her entire life, without realizing it tears were falling from her eyes. The trust of the girls saw him Amy, Makoto and Monaco look at him and they were shocked they all got the strangest feeling meeting the blonde teen. What's going on why am I crying this is the first time I'm seeing him, and yet I feel like I know him my entire life, Usagi thought. Naruto was still shocked staring at the meatball head girl, why'd I feel like I know her my entire life? Hey you're one of the new exchange students from China Koshiro Kyo, Amino said breaking their trance. I have to go, Naruto said as he started to leave. Usagi was still in her trance she still had tears in her eyes. Usagi what's wrong are you okay? Ask a worry Makoto. Yeah you don't look good, Monaco said who was also worry. Why are you crying? Amy said worry. You okay Usagi? Naru said worry. I'm, fine I just pass out for a moment that's all, Usagi said while drying her tears. The girls didn't believe her they something was wrong with her, and there was something about that blonde teen like they feel like they know him. A very irritated Uchiha entered the cafeteria followed by a huge crowd of girls, apparently they wanted to share their lunches with him he was so annoyed this is the last thing he needed to have another annoying fangirl club. He was also annoyed because he has searched the entire school and he hasn't found Sailor Moon, he activated his Sharingan and detecting the chakra level from every girl in the cafeteria and he hasn't found the large amount of chakra he is looking for. He then passed to the table where Usagi and the others were and he activated his bloodline once he then gasped in shock. Impossible those girls have so much chakra in them but there's something wrong, 
Their chakra looks like it's sealed like they haven't released it yet so I finally found them Sailor Moon and the Senshi's the one with the meatballs on her head must be Sailor Moon because her chakra signature is higher than the others. Makoto, Monaco said to the tall brunette, Yeah I know he's looking at us, Makoto said while blushing. Yeah what a hunk, Monaco said blushing and gazing at the Uchiha. He reminds me of my lost senpai, Makoto said, everybody fell down anime style. Makoto every guy you meet reminds you of your lost senpai, Usagi said with a sweat dropped on the back of her head. Hey it's you Saki-san, Naru said while waving at the teen. By now Sasuke has deactivated his Sharingan and went to the group. Oh hey, Sasuke said while looking at Usagi and the girls. So you're the second exchange student Yamoto Saki, Amino said. Second? Sasuke thought, Naruto must have been here. Um, do you guys know where Kyo went? Sasuke said. Yeah he left the cafeteria he was a little down, Naru said. I see I have to go. He then left while Makoto and Monaco were still going gaga over him. Oh I don't care if he's younger than me he is so cute, Monaco said while blushing. Yeah he's so cute, Makoto replied. He's very cute right Usagi? Monaco asked at the meatball head girl who was still in her trance. Usagi can you hear me? Amy said. Huh? Usagi snapping from her trance. Oh it's nothing. Come on Usagi tells us what's wrong, Monaco said. It's nothing really, Usagi said, Koshiro Kyo, she whisper. Usagi did you said something? Amy said, outside of Jubin High. Luna and Artemis were waiting for the girls in front of the entrance to the school like they always do Artemis was bored of waiting while Luna was still in deep thought. Ever since she met a certain blonde ninja she has been feeling uneasy it was really bothering her. She has this big feeling like she has met him before. The black cat finally snapped from her thinking and look at the white cat. I'm bore Monaco and the others are sure taking their time, Artemis said whining. Artemis? What is it Luna? There's something I have to tell you? If it has to do about why you have been so quiet lately then I'm all ears. Yes it's about that boy we meet at the arcade yesterday. Ho oh, you mean you mean the kid who was hungry yeah I felt sorry for him his stomach was growling like a yoma. Luna's sweat dropped. Well yes it's just ever since I saw him I got this feeling about him and it was the same feeling I felt when I first met Usagi. What are you sure Luna? Number doubt about it there's something about him it's very familiar I think we should keep an eye on him Artemis. You think so well now that you mention it I guess I guess I have a feeling about him too like we meet him before. Luna nodded at that time Usagi and the others arrive, Usagi still had thoughtful expression on her face. Well it does about time you got here you really know how to keep a cat waiting, Artemis said. Jeesh Artemis we were busy with schoolwork, Monaco said. Excuse me Monaco but I don't think it was schoolwork you were busy on but rather a certain boy, Makoto said with a smirk. Monaco blush hard and glare at the tall brunette, I wasn't the only one you were checking him out too. Makoto blushed. No I wasn't looking at him I was busy on my matchwork. Yeah right am I'm Sailor Moon. Monaco said, no I wasn't. Yes you were. No I wasn't, does not, does to, Amy. Luna and Artemis sweat dropped at the girls arguing but Luna noticed Usagi's sad expression she became worried for her Usagi was not the kind of girl who would be sad unless something happened to her. Usagi are you okay? Huh? Usagi said snapping from her thinking. Oh I'm fine let's go to the arcade I'm feeling lucky today I'm going to beat the Sailor V video game today. She gave them a fake smile they nodded in agreement and left for the arcade. Outside of the cafeteria Naruto was still thinking with the meatball head girl, he didn't know why but he feels like he knows her even if he doesn't know her name. He didn't know why these emotions came the sadness the joy he didn't know why he felt that way when he saw her, his deep thinking was put to a stop when Sasuke interrupted him. There you are, oh it's you Sasuke, what's wrong with you, you sound sad. It's nothing, the blonde replied in a soft tone. Nothing are you sure look Naruto I know you too well you are not the kind of person to feel down for nothing you're always running your mouth like an idiot always saying how much you're going to become Hokage someday. What idiot why you, Naruto growled glaring daggers at the Uchiha. So you're back to normal that's good, he said with a smirk. Huh what do you mean? You were a little depressed so I thought insulting you might bring you back to normal. Yeah I'm feeling better now thanks Sasuke. Okay well I better go it's my first day at work. 
Work you mean you found a job already? Yeah so I suggest you find one oh that reminds me how much money did you spend yesterday? Um, yesterday? The blonde pretended not to know. Yes you spend money yesterday when you were looking for a place to eat. Um, I, well I, Naruto how much money did you spend yesterday? Sasuke said in a dead serious tone. He gulped. Well, flashback to Jin's palace yesterday. Naruto was so excited when he arrived at Jin's palace not to mention that he was dead hungry he found the place very comfortable it wasn't as small as Ichiraku it was big. There were a lot of people apparently the place had a good reputation they were eating different style of dishes rice balls dumplings and of course ramen. The sights of the food made his hunger worse so he didn't waste time and head to the counter and order his ramen. Welcome to Jin's palace can I get your order, the man behind the counter said. Yes one big bowl of miso pork ramen with everything on it on the double. Coming right up, after 5 minutes of waiting the man returned with the ramen when the blonde ninja saw the bowl he was shocked the bowl was twice as big as Ichiraku's the ramen had everything on it just like he ordered it, the smell was amazing and it was making his mouth water he grabbed his chopsticks and began eating. In just 5 minutes he ate his first bowl and order another one and on and one he continued eating. 20 minutes later, the people of the restaurant had their jaws to the ground they just witnessed the impossible a 15 year old teen just ate 20 bowls of ramen, it was a new record the man in the counter also had his jaw to the ground he never thought something like this was possible. I don't believe this 20 bowls of ramen this kid's stomach is bottomless he's not human. Naruto was so full his belly looked like a balloon like it was ready to blow he could barely get up he was very happy Jin's palace became his new favorite ramen place. It wasn't long before the man in the counter came with the bill he freak out knowing that a certain someone was going to be very upset with him. Oh man I'm seriously dead Sasuke is going to kill me. End of flashback. Sasuke raised an eyebrow. You spend 50,000 Ryo on ramen. Naruto gulped. Yeah I'm sorry I was so hungry. Sasuke sighed. It's nothing to worry about, it's a good thing I hid the money from the Hokage when I did. What you hid it then that means you still have it then what was the money that I just spend? Sasuke smirked. It was your own money all of the money that you save in all of your missions. Naturally in this case Naruto would go ballistics, but since he didn't spend the money Tsunade gave them he felt relief. Wow Sasuke you knew I was going to spend Granny Tsunade's money so you stole it from me man that was pretty clever Sasuke. The Uchiha snorted. All the better that I should be the one in charge of this mission. Whatever, I have to go now and find a job, Sasuke said as he left. Yeah yeah where am I going to get a job Tokyo is a big city it could take forever to find one. He smiled. Oh I should go to that place where I meet Motokasen what was it called Crown Arcade yeah that's the place. He then left towards the arcade. In the mysterious chamber Beryl was holding a sphere containing the energy Vampira has gathered from the humans. She was truly pleased she needed more energy to restore her power and fulfilled her revenge on Sailor Moon. You have served me well Vampira carry on with your work. Yes my queen. The bat human said telepathic. She gazed at the energy sphere in her hands. I need more energy than this to restore my power. The only thing remaining is the silver crystal I don't trust Orochimaru I'll take it myself when I had the chance. She continued gazing at the sphere unaware that someone was watching from near the entrance to the chamber, Kabuto adjusted his glasses watching the Negaverse Queen. Just as Orochimaru-sama suspected she's planning to take the silver crystal to herself I better report back, he vanished in a cloud of smoke. Hikawa Jinja Temple Sasuke arrived at the temple to start his first day of work, even if he thought that Grandpa Hino was a little weird he wasn't going to let it bother him. He also likes the temple. The entire place seems to help him relax and have some peace of mind, when he gazed at the front of the temple he saw a girl who seems to be a few years younger than him with raven hair and eyes wearing a priestess robe. He had to admit that she was attractive, he erased that last thought and went to her, Ray has finally noticed the boy walking to her direction and blush a little he was very attractive, she decided to talk to him he could be a customer, while she was at it she could ask for his name and get to know him better. Hello welcome to Hikawa Jinja Temple how can I help you? I'm here to work it's my first day on the job, the Uchiha replied. How work? Rei said puzzle not having a clue what was going on, she didn't remember looking for people to help her with the temple's chores. Then it hit her it was so obvious, judging by his looks she knew the only person who will offer him a job, with the sole purpose of having lots of girls to come to the temple. I guess he will never learn, grandpa. 
After calling his name Grandpa Hino came from the temple joining his granddaughter who had an annoyed look on her face. He smiled seeing Sasuke. Osaki oh, san you're here on time good I like punctual people I will give you a tour of the temple before you begin. Wait grandpa what's the meaning of this? Ray asked not liking to have another cute boy working at the temple when they already have another cute boy who used to be in a rock band. Grandpa didn't what was wrong with his granddaughter until he realized his mistake. Oh my apologies I'm sorry where are my manners Saki san I want you to meet my granddaughter Ray. Ray this is Saki san. Nice to meet you I'm Yamoto Saki. He offered his hand as a polite manner. Nice to meet you to Saki. Ray said taking his hand in a shake with a small blush on her cheeks. Well let's get going but before we start the tour, you'll have to change your clothing as long as you're working in the temple you'll be wearing a priest robes. That's all right with me I don't have a problem with that, Sasuke said. Grandpa was about to leave until Ray grabbed him by the back of his robe. The old man gulped before looking back at his granddaughter. Yes Ray is there something wrong? Grandpa you didn't tell me you hire more people to work at the temple, she said with a frown. Well I forgot to tell you my bad but the more people we have the better, he gave her a thumb up. Really I just hope you didn't give him the job so more girls will come here, her right eye was twitching. Sasuke's sweat dropped hearing that. Is that why he gave me the job to attract girls to this place? His eyes widened in terror at the horrible thought from his past, when he was still in the ninja academy the girls falling for him and stalking him till no end, no anything but fan girls. Of course not Ray you know very well we need more people to work here so I'm doing my part to gather more workers, Grandpa said in an innocent tone. Yeah right who is he trying to fool it's not a coincidence that he picked a cute boy. Ray gave a quick glance at the Uchiha. No a very cute boy, she blushed at the thought. Let's get going Saki san time for you to change your clothes please follow me, Grandpa said as he went inside the temple. Sasuke headed inside to follow the old man before looking at Rei who was sighing. Suddenly he smiled at her which it was considered very rare of his part. It was nice meeting you Rei. Rei snapped from her thinking to looked at him as he went inside the temple. She blushed again. Then again I guess having another boy working at the temple won't be so bad after all. Sasuke who was walking the halls of the temple with grandpa was confused at his sudden reaction. Okay what just happened back there? Why did I felt like smiling at her? Crown Arcade Naruto entered the arcade and he saw many people playing with the machines, he got curious at the machines the people were having so much fun playing with them. It reminded him of the pachinko machines back at Konoha, he remembered seeing Tsunade playing them and she looked highly addicted playing the game. He thought the game wasn't so fun since he has never played it before, as he walked through the arcade he saw Matoki talking to four girls wearing the same female uniform from the school he's in. One of them with a familiar meatball hairstyle like he has met her before was playing the machine. He went to them trying to see the game she was playing. Hey Matoki-san. Matoki looked at him with a smile recognizing him. Okyo-san welcome back, want to play some video games? Video games yeah. Um I mean no I came to ask you if you're looking for people to give you an extra hand here? Matoki smiled. You mean if I'm hiring someone to help me here? Well I've been thinking of looking for people who could help me run the arcade. Naruto gave a big smile, if that's the case then I'll do it I want to work here. Okay it will be nice to have some fresh help here alright I'll hire you, you can start tomorrow. Thanks Matoki-san you can count on me I won't let you down. Matoki who are you talking to? Asked Minako who turned her attention from watching Usagi help along with Amy. Hey it's you, you're the new student from school. Yes it's you Kyo-san, Amy said. Hearing Naruto's fake name Usagi stopped playing the game and looked next to her, to see the blonde teen looking at her with a shocked expression. Their eyes locked and once again they have felt the same feeling when they first met at the school. Makoto turned her attention to her friend only to see her staring at the new student without saying a word. This time Usagi wasn't going to stay quiet she smiled at him while offering her hand for a shake. Hello Kyo-san I'm Sakino Usagi but everyone calls me Usagi. These are my friends Amy Makoto and Minako. She pointed at each one in the same order she mentioned them. Naruto snapped from his trance and smiled taking the hand of the meatball haired girl. Hi Usagi-san and everyone else I'm happy to meet all of you. He was telling the truth, for some reason he was very happy to see all of the girls not knowing why. It's nice to meet you Kyo-san, Amy said. Same here, Makoto the tall brunette said. It's nice to meet you too Kyo-san. 
Monaco said. I guess you guys know him because he has the same uniform the boys at your school are wearing, Matoki said. Yeah he's a new student at our school. Usagi said not taking her eyes off Naruto. I'm sorry for what happened at the cafeteria. Oh are you talking about when I tripped hey it's all right I wasn't your fault, it was mine for being clumsy. That's something you can relate to don't you think so Usagi? Monaco said with a giggle. Usagi frowned at her friend's comment, I'll pretend I didn't hear that, of course she knew what Monaco was talking about she was a big klutz after all. So Kyo-san do you like video games? asked Makoto. I never played them before but it looks very fun, Naruto said with his fox grin. The girls were a little shocked by this including Matoki but Usagi was more shocked than the rest. What you never played video games before what kind of place are you from? Usagi don't be rude, Amy said. Naruto sweat dropped, in Konoha the only machines I know are the pachinko machines not this kinds of games. Oh yeah that reminds me be careful when you're walking to your homes, Matoki said. Why is that Matoki-san? asked Amy. Haven't you heard the news they say a vampire is attacking people? A vampire? Usagi said scared. Yeah the police have found several bodies of people unconscious, but the shocking part is that they found two small holes on their necks, Matoki said. Amy, Makoto and Minako looked at each other thinking that it could be the same thing they're thinking. Ayoma it seems the senshis were going to fight one again. Suddenly a beeping noise was heard. Amy reached for her pocket taking out her senshi computer they knew what was going and what they had to do. Looks like we have to go buy Matoki san by Kyo san. Usagi said as they left the arcade. A vampire, surely it's not Orochimaru he's a snake, Naruto thought. This could be trouble I better go find Sasuke. Matoki san I'll see you tomorrow, he waved goodbye. Yeah take care. Matoki replied. Hakawa Jinja Temple. Sasuke was sweeping the leaves of the temple, he was wearing a black and white priest robe and so far he likes working at the temple. This was definitely a place he could get used to, compared to how hard his life has been since his childhood to the times he was training under Orochimaru those were not the happiest days in his life. Yet here he was working on a place which he considered the most peaceful place he could ever be. He already got along with Grandpa Hino and Rei they were nice people and he could see them as good friends. He saw Rei as she left the temple wearing a purple blouse with a white skirt and white high heels he admitted that she looked very attractive. Saki please could you tell Grandpa that I'll be back later? Sure. He saw her leaving before he got a terrible feeling that sent chills to his spine, he activated his Sharingan and his eyes widened, what an evil energy this doesn't look good I better go find Naruto. Time kip in an alley a few blocks from the arcade. Stay away you monster don't come any closer, a man shouted next to his girlfriend. You can't escape me human, Vampira growled as she grabbed him leaning closer to his neck, now give me your energy. The man groaned in pain as he felt the bat Yoma's fangs pierce his flesh soon he felt unconscious from having his energy sucked. Vampira gazed at his next victim the young woman who had gave a loud scream. Scream all that you want no one will save now you're next. No stay away, she shouted with tears in her eyes. Vampiria charged at her as the woman tried to run, but the Yoma was faster and grabbed her reaching to her neck, it's over human. Hold it right there Yoma. The bat human gaze at the entrance of the alley seeing the five senshis, who are you? Sailor Moon made her usual hand gestures, I am Sailor Moon the champion of justice and in the name of the moon I shall punish you. And in the name of Mercury I shall punish you, and in the name of Mars. And in the name of Jupiter, and in the name of Venus. Vampiria growled, the sailor Senshi's queen Beryl told me to avoid them, but if I will steal their energy she will be most pleased. Surrender you Yoma. Moon said. How about I say no and drain you all of your energy? In your dreams bad breath, Mars said as she prepared to fire her attack, fire soul. She shot a wave of fire which the Yoma dodged using its wing to fly away, is that all you got? How about this? Jupiter said preparing her attack, supreme thunder. She shot a lighting attack and the Yoma dodged the attack charging a Venus, this is easier than I thought. Near their location Naruto and Sasuke were running straight at the source of the evil chakra, they has a feeling that it could be Orochimaru. As the two ninjas stopped they saw the alley where they finally saw the monster fighting a couple of strangers they didn't know. No way it's a monster, Naruto said, but it's not Orochimaru. 
But who are those people fighting the monster? Asked Naruto as he somehow knew them not knowing why. They must be the senshis looks like we finally found them, Sasuke said with his Sharingan on and smirked. I knew it they had the same hidden chakra signature from the girls I saw at the school cafeteria, we finally found them. They look like they need our help come on Sasuke. No not yet let's see how they can handle themselves. What I am not going to stand around here and let them fight that thing on their own, the blonde said. Remember what the Hokage told us, the senshis are supposed to be strong so let's find out if it's true. Naruto growled. Fine but if things gets out of hand I'm going in. The senshis were handling themselves pretty well against the Yoma. Their attacks were slowing her down but Vampiria was too stubborn to go down without a fight. She immediately went straight at Sailor Moon and grabbed her by her neck. Sailor Moon. The senshis said in unison. Let me go you. Moon struggled to break free but the bat Yoma's grip was quite strong. Vampiria squeezed her neck making Moon unable to breathe. No. Mars shouted. Let her go now. The senshis were about to go to her aid but Vampiria stopped them in their tracks. Don't move senshis not one more step or she dies, the Yoma hissed. The senshis were in a tight spot they couldn't risk their leader getting killed. Vampiria grinned evilly she had them right where she wants them, like I said too easy. We have no choice, Mercury said. Naruto was upset watching the monster grabbing Sailor Moon by the neck. He clenched his fist couldn't take it anymore they needed help them. Before he made his move the Yoma was hit in her hand drooping the moon senshi in the process, he saw that the source that hit the Yoma was a red rose. Who threw that? Asked the angry Vampiria. The bat Yoma got her answer when she saw a man wearing a tuxedo and top hat standing at the roof of the building and came to the side of the moon senshi. Sailor Moon are you alright? Tuxedo common I am fine now that you're here. Moon said feeling relief that her boyfriend had showed up to save her. Look out! The senshis yelled seeing Vampiria fly at them at high speed. Moon and Tuxedo gasped at her speed, just before she reached them a kanai hit her between her eyes Vampiria shouted in pain feeling the stabbed of the kanai. However through that is going to pay dearly for this, Vampiria said while taking the kanai off. Now's our chance she has let her guard down, Jupiter said while the rest nodded. Shine Aqua Illusion, Fire Soul, Supreme Thunder, Crescent Beam. The four attacks hit Vampiria as she yelled in pain, she fell to the ground feeling very weak and injured, damn this can't be happening. Sailor Moon now's your chance finish her off, Tuxedo Common said. All right, she said ready to fire her attack, Silver Moon Power Kiss. The attack hit Vampiria turning her to dust, the senshis finally relax they have defeated the Yoma. Well no doubt that there's a new enemy, Jupiter said. Yeah my visions are always true, Mars said. Why there goes our peace and quiet, Moon said with a sigh. You okay Sailor Moon? Asked Venus. Yeah I'm fine, the Moon said she replied. That Yoma was pretty tough, Jupiter said. I'll say, Venus said. The important thing is that we defeated her together, Tuxedo Common said. How huh, what's this? asked Mercury picking up the kanai from the ground. Oh that was the weapon that hit the Yoma, whoever threw that save me and tuxedo common, Moon said. Let me see that, Mars said as she took the weapon from the Moon senshi, she gasped once she took a good look at it. This is, a kanai. A kanai? asked the puzzle sailor Moon. Yeah I heard about it, it's a ninja weapon, the fire senshi said. Ninja? asked Moon. So they are ninjas helping us now? Venus said thinking about their last allies the Sailor Star Lights. We can't be too sure we'll have to investigate this and tell Luna and Artemis about this, Mercury said. The group nodded looks like the fight to protect the Earth has resumed once again with the appearance of a new enemy, and once again the senshis were going to fight to stop it and protect the Earth. At the mysterious chamber Beryl growled as the energy ball vanished from her hands, she glared she knew what this meant her Yoma was defeated and she already who was responsible for its defeat. Curse that Sailor Moon Vampiria has been defeated, nevertheless she has gather enough energy Scorpios you are next in gathering energy for me. Yes my queen, the figure said behind the darkness of the cave. Time skip. At Naruto and Sasuke's apartment, you didn't have to do that, Sasuke said. If I didn't throw that Kanai Sailor Moon could have gotten killed, it's our mission to protect her and the silver crystal. True you seem to be more dedicated to the mission than usual something wrong? 
he asked not showing that he cared. No nah, I'm just being my normal self, he replied with a shrug ignoring what he was feeling when he saw the senshis. Anyway as for the Sailor Moon and the senshis we can keep an eye on them at school. Huh school what are you talking about Sasuke? I guess I haven't told you yet, I know who the senshis are. What you know why you didn't tell me, asked the blonde. I guess it didn't cross my mind, well are you going to tell me? Oh, he yawned, I'll tell you tomorrow Dobi I'm going to bed night Naruto. What come back Sasuke and tell me already, Naruto said annoyed for leaving hanging to find out about the identity of the senshis. He sighed as he went to the balcony of the apartment gazing at the moon he started thinking about the senshis, when he saw them he was feeling the same feeling when he met Usagi and her friends, I wonder if my dream has something to do with Sailor Moon and the senshis it can't be a coincidence. As he continues to gaze at the moon he wonders if he will find the meaning of his dream, he returned inside hoping to find the answers someday maybe while helping protecting Sailor Moon he will find the meaning of his dream. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next video.